It's a final topic, pediatric problems. We're going to start with a hip. And the ages of the children is going to be a big differentiating factor here. So first is developmental dysplasia of the hip. It's developmental. Well, first of all, let's talk about the definition. This is hip instability leading to persistent hip dislocation. And this is usually seen in newborns. And that's why I want to highlight developmental. It's, it's in newborns. They get a persistent hip dislocation due to hip instability. And because it will be, be dislocated, you're going to have a leg length discrepancy. Where your hip's going to protrude out, and so your leg's going to be a little longer. And there's going to be positive Barlow and Ortolani signs. Um, basically, long story short, these are due to when you move, you move the hips around, you get a palpable clunk sound, which is the hip dislocating. That's a positive sign. And you confirm this with ultrasound because usually you would think MSK, you give an x ray. But remember how, how um, bones are formed? Remember how this is an endochondral ossification? And that takes time. And the cartilage isn't ossified until around four months. So you're going to use ultrasound to confirm this. Next one is the leg calvi perthes disease. This is idiopathic avascular necrosis of the femoral head. So femoral head is right here. And avascular necrosis. That means it doesn't get blood and it dies, and we don't know why. And this is often seen in a four to seven year old with hip pain with weight, with weight bearing, so it leads to limping. And the pain can radiate to the knee. So you have a four to seven year old kid limping around, pain, it's probably the leg calve perthes, and that's because of avascular necrosis. So next is slipped capital femoral epiphysis. This is displacement aka slippage of the femoral head in relation to the femoral neck. So this is the neck right here. This is the head. As you can see, they don't line up. You see this this is a slippage right here. It slipped. You can see it in the cone here. This is here, but this is the head and it has slipped. And this is very, very classic. It's an adolescent kid, ten to sixteen years old, and he's overweight or a slash obese. And they're hip, they have hip pain, they're limping. This is a slipped capital femoral epiphysis. It's a very the slipped femoral epiphysis. Um, seen in an adolescent kid, overweight. Um, you diagnose it with x ray. So, this is a little chart summarizing everything. I don't need to go over it again, but you can look at the notes, take a picture of this, do whatever you need to do. Next problem we're going to look at is the knee. This is Osgood Slaughter disease. Okay, traction apophysitis. It's overuse injury due to repeated strain with irritation in the apophysis. So first of all, the question is, what is the apophysis? This is where this is the location on the bone where the tendon attaches. So you can kind of see this tendon here. This is the patellar tendon, and it attaches to the bone right here. And you can see this, it's, it's been a little, the bone's been ripped off a little bit. That's traction of apophysitis. Um, because you have that overuse of that knee, um, the tendon pulls too much on the, on the bone, and you get inflammation, and, um, and it kind of rip, uh, pulls off a little bit. So this is seen in an adolescent, it's anterior knee pain, so pain in the front of the knee. Usually this kid is playing sports that requires a lot of running or jumping. He's playing basketball, they're, they're jumping a lot and they have knee pain. And that's Osgood Schlatter disease. Uh, this is it's pretty commonly seen, so know this one. Finally, last but not least, radio head subluxation, which is also known as nursemaid's elbow. So this is a problem where you have a partial dislocation of the, of the head of the radius. So this one, it dislocates. Um, due to a sudden tugging. So sometimes maybe you're like swinging li your little kid around, you tug on their on their elbow a little bit, and this dislocates down. This goes down, so that there's going to be a little space that opens up here. The annular ligament is going to go into that little space, and then the radius is going to go back to where it came from, and it's going to compress on that annular ligament. So I'm not really drawing it very well. Try it again. But what's going to happen is you're going to get compression of the annular. So this radius is going to come back over here. It's going to 
it's going to slip, it's going to leave a little opening, annular ligament's going to go into that opening, radius goes back, and it compresses the annular ligament. And that's going to cause pain. And um, this is very common in kids less than five years old. Just think about your swinging your, your little five-year-old nephew or niece or cousin around. That that radius pops out, annular ligament goes in. And this is a very classic. You're going to see their hand in a flexed and pronated position. So if you can just remember that this picture, the arm, the elbow is flexed, as you can see here, and it's pronated. All right. So that is it for our MSK section.